Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video I want to talk about bile, how it's produced and what it's comprised of. First thing is when you think of bile, you need to think of fat digestion and absorption. That's the first thing. Now bile itself is a substance that's made up of a number of different components, which I'll talk about in a sec, that is produced by the liver and stored and concentrated in the gallbladder. Now, when we eat fatty meals, what happens is the fat stimulates a whole downstream cascade that releases hormones that stimulate both the liver and gallbladder to release the bile that's been produced into the small intestines. This bile will help break down fats into small and more manageable, manageable pieces for us to then be able to absorb into our lymphatic system, then the bloodstream, and then be delivered to various aspects of the body and ultimately back to the liver. So let's first talk about what is in bile. When we look at bile itself, bile is comprised 95%, so most is water. Most of bile is water. Then if you look at its components, from what I believe to be most important is the bile acids and bile salts. I'll talk about the similarities and differences of that in a sec. That's actually going to constitute most of this quick video. What else? We've got phospholipids. We have cholesterol. We have bilirubin, which is a breakdown product of red blood cells. We have proteins and amino acids. And we also have ions. And the most important ions that you'll find in bile include sodium, potassium, chloride, and bicarbonate. All right, let's focus on these bile acids and bile salts, all right? Really important because they are specifically what help us break down fats, the term is emulsification, and absorb these fats in our small intestines. All right. In the liver, we have cholesterol. Now this cholesterol can come from the foods that we eat. Ultimately, that food gets broken down in the small intestines, gets absorbed in the lymphatic system, forms these chylomicrons that ultimately get delivered back to the liver. So that's how we can get cholesterol. Or we can get it from the production of acetyl-CoA. All right, they're the two major methods we get cholesterol. Regardless, in the liver, cholesterol can be turned into two particular what we call bile acids. So now we're talking about bile acids. These bile acids are produced through various mechanisms using enzymes, which we don't need to talk about. And basically, if I were to draw cholesterol up, right? If I were to say that cholesterol looks like this, the types of changes we are making to cholesterol to produce these primary bile acids are minor. And they look like this. And then the other one looks like this. So very minor, subtle changes. Now, what we've got is something called cholic acid. And what we've also got is keno deoxy cholic acid. These are what we call the primary bile acids. Now what happens with these primary bile acids is this. They will move from the liver into the ducts. So it goes to the hepatic duct. And some of this can be stored. Now if this is between meals, some of this will be stored in the gallbladder and be concentrated. All right. Now what you'll find is all of these components move to the gallbladder from the liver and become concentrated and actually become 10 times more concentrated than what, like, what they are in the liver. So that's one important function. And they, they're stored there until a fatty meal comes through and then it squeezes because of a hormone called cholecystokinin and squeezes the contents out into the small intestines. But not all of it is stored there, only around about half. So we produce around about six, 700 mils of bile per day and half of it gets stored in that gallbladder. But of these bile acids that we're producing, a good number of them are going to go into the small intestines and they're going to move their way through the small intestines until they hit near the end of the small intestines, so the terminal portion, 
This terminal portion is called the ilium. And here in the ilium, what we're going to find, so let's draw it up. We're going to have, which one was, so we're going to have cholic acid. And we're going to have kenodeoxycholic acid. And what happens is the bacteria present at the terminal portion of the small intestines, they further metabolize these bile acids and they turn primary bile acids into secondary bile acids and they change them just a little bit. And so what they end up doing is producing something that may look a little bit like this, for example. Again, subtle changes. And what we've now turned into is we've taken the cholic acid and we've turned it into deoxycholic acid. And we've taken the keno deoxycholic acid and turned it into lithocholic acid. And these are what we term secondary bile acids. And it, what happens is this, a very small portion of them will move all the way through into our fecal material, a very small portion. But what you'll find is most of it actually gets reabsorbed through a bloodstream, which is termed the portal system, the circulation where it goes from the liver through the ducts, into the small intestines, and back through the portal system. This is called the enterohepatic circulation. Let's write that down. Enterohepatic circulation. And you'll find that this deoxycholic acid and lithocholic acid, which are secondary bile acids, reabsorb back into the liver. Now, something happens here. They, these are unconjugated bile acids, primary unconjugated bile acids, secondary unconjugated bile acids. Now we want to conjugate something to them. This is what happens here, back in the liver. We can take these secondary bile acids. One looks like this. The other looks like this. And what we do is through a number of enzymatic steps, we can give them a hat. Let's just say this one gets a blue hat. And this one gets a green hat. We've conjugated something to them. In this case, it's a hat. Now, what this product is that we've conjugated to them are amino acids. So for example, the lithocholic acid, if we give it a taurine amino acid, so let's just say this blue hat is a taurine. And let's just say this green hat is a glycine. What we now have are bile salts. Bile salts are bile acids with conjugated amino acids on them. And the reason why they're called bile salts is this. The amino acid portion loves water. They're hydrophilic and the rest of the body is hydrophobic. We now have an amphipathic molecule. That means a part of it hates water, a part of it loves water. Why is that important? Because of this. These amphipathic molecules are now, which we term bile salts, now move back through the ducts. Some continue to go, go to the gallbladder and get concentrated. So now in the gallbladder we have water, bile acids, bile salts, phospholipids, cholesterol, bilirubin, proteins, amino acids, and ions that's sitting and accumulating, waiting for a fatty meal, but it also continues into the small intestines where it moves through. And what can happen? This bacteria can take the hats off and then throw it back in as again deoxycholic acid and lithocholic acid and this cycle continues and like I said 95% of these bile acids and bile salts go through this enterohepatic circulation. That means the recycling is the most important part of bile salts and bile acids. The liver will only produce 5% and a very minor amount actually gets excreted through our fecal waste. Right, what happens is this as well. We've got our stomach, right? And our stomach's going to have parts of it let's draw this up the stomach is going to connect 
to this small intestines, also known as the duodenum, this first part. And what happens is we now eat a fatty meal. Now, fatty meals are going to be made up of triglycerides, monoglycerides, phospholipids, cholesterol, and it's going to move its way through. As it moves its way through the duodenum, it stimulates certain cells, enteroendocrine cells, to release a hormone called CCK. CCK travels to both the gallbladder and the liver and stimulates them to release bile. Cholecystokinin literally means to contract the gallbladder, squeezes it, and it squeezes this concentrated bile, which has bile acids and bile salts, into the small intestines where this big bit of fat has moved through now. And the important point here is this big bit of fat cannot be broken down because it's so big. Think of fat or oil in a pan, it comes together, forms these big globules. We need to break it up into manageable pieces. How can we do that? Well, these bile salts. I want to now draw these bile salts here like this. We're going to have the first one and the second one with their respective hats. And what they do is they come along and because one part, the body, hates water, it binds to the fatty part, and the other part loves water, it's exposed to the outside. And so what it does is it starts to break down parts of this fat into smaller, more manageable pieces by surrounding it with the hydrophobic portion, and then the hydrophilic portion, the amino acid, is exposed to the liquid environment. This is great. This is now forming these mycelles or mycelles, which then allow for enzymes that come from the pancreas. Now the pancreas is actually sitting in this C-shaped little area here. We've got the pancreas here, which creates a whole bunch of digestive enzymes. And the pancreas actually connects in as well. And the pancreas is going to release all these digestive enzymes into the small intestines, molecular scissors called lipases and co-lipases that ch -ch -ch, start to chop up the fats so that we can then ultimately absorb them into the body and use them. This is the importance of bile, bile acids and bile salts.